We just learned about the substitution rules for variable assignments, specifically reference variables. Let's see what, ha what can actually happen at runtime in terms of the change on dynamic types for the variable. So a reference variable dynamic type, again, we talk about reference variable. We don't talk about primitive uh, variable, right? Dynamic type is simply the type of the objects that it is currently pointing to at a runtime. Specifically, remember, every reference variable is going to store the address of some objects. So the uh, object's type is really the dynamic type for uh, the reference variable. And that's something we'll see uh, through examples. Dynamic type of a reference variable may change whenever we reassign that variable to a different objects. Okay, that's a very uh, simple principle, but we're gonna see through examples. And so for every reference variable, there are actually two types at any moment. Static type, when it is declared, and static type never changes, and also dynamic type. Whenever the uh, reference variable store some non-null uh, value for the address, that means it is pointing to dynamically some objects in the memory. So that object type will be the dynamic type. So that's a distinction, but we'll see. So there are two ways to reassign a reference variable. Either you can use a new keyword, or you can simply reassign that to another reference variable. So these are the two ways, but we'll see one by one. And before we do that, let's now talk about how you can visualize the static type versus dynamic type. Typically, static type, if the context is rather clear, it would be just implicit, meaning that we don't really visualize it, okay? And uh, this is just one example. Let's see, uh, I'll switch to iPad in just a moment. So you can read through the different points over here. But this point here, like what I just, uh, like what I just said, if the uh, context is actually clear, we don't really uh, write out the uh, static type. But I think for some example, especially when I talk about typecasting, I may just have to make the uh, static type more clear, like a clearer or more explicit. Let's take a look at this example here, right? So this page really summarizes what you have to know about the distinction between static versus dynamic type. So here we got one decoration over here, and also we got the variable actually stores the address of this new objects of type resi uh, resident students. And let's now uh, do some annotation here. So this student over here is really the declared static type. Okay, at a, at a point of decoration, you're going to fix once and for all for the uh, static type. And whenever you're trying to say the reference variable is reassigned, we'll simply initialize to some, the address of some new objects over here, for example. So this will be the dynamic type. And as you can see, Whenever you're using the assignment operator, that means you're changing the dynamic type uh, of the uh, reference variable from one to the other. That's something we'll see later. And you can see here, there's also a very important principle over here. We talk about for the static type, you have to know about the expectation, right? Over here, for example, let's say for this variable S over here, we know that it's static, static type is actually students. And when we visualize it, we'll simply say S with the static type students. All right, let me just emphasize again. So this student over here is the static type, which will determine, as we said before, about the methods or attributes you can invoke on S. So here it can be, so S dot over here. What can we put after the dot? That's very important. Let's now just review very quickly, right? It's going to be, you can see S, the static type is simply students over here. So everything that's declared over here plus the ancestor classes of students, which in this case would just be objects, so nothing else. Okay, so it's gonna be the name, courses, number of courses, register, and also get tuition, right? It's going to be the name, and also courses, number of courses, and also register. And it really corresponds to the table that we spoke about before, right? So I think uh, just uh, we keep repeating the idea because they really need some time to digest. Get tuition. Okay, so these are the methods, right? So again, we also uh, we also call these are the expectation for S, that particular type, static type, which is students. So it's a static type is students, which determines the expectations. And this part here is the expectation. And one thing that's really important, 
you may notice that the dynamic type for this object over here is simply a new resident students object, right? You can see this is resident students. How do we visualize the dynamic type over here? So the title of the box should be the dynamic type. Let's start with that. So you can see here the resident students over here. So this is the dynamic type. And accordingly, what should be available for this resident students? Resident students actually appear over here, which means is uh it's uh whatever it is uh whatever that should be uh available at the runtime for resident students depends on the attributes and methods that are declared in at this level here and also along the ancestor path. Everything that's from here will also be inherited. So that that uh that means we actually got you can see name over here that's inherited from the student class, the its ancestor, number of courses over here which is here and also register courses which is the courses over here and also we can invoke uh register and also get tuition not only that we also got premium rates over here right that's all uh, newly declared in the resident student that's why we also got premium rates over here right so we have a separation of concern we talk about s uh the expectation for s which uh, which is determined by its static type and also it is dynamically pointing to some objects whose structure will be determined by also the expectation for this particular type, which is resident students, right? Hopefully so far so good. So now let me conclude by writing one expression and ask you whether or not it will compile. If I say S dot premium rates, is this valid or not? Well, to judge this, you might be thinking that well, since S is dynamically pointing to a resident student's object, and resident student's object does have premium rates over here uh, that's a uh, store in the memory. So this should be okay. But the answer is no, it is not okay. Because you should really look at the uh, the expectation for the reference variable itself, which, depend, uh, which is determined by its static type. So if you look at S over here, right, it's a uh, static type is actually students meaning that so these are the expectation for s even though dynamically it is pointing to some resident students objects which it has the uh, premium rate available doesn't matter all right it's really important to notice this point so the conclusion is this expression over here is not going to work because the static type for s is students which does not have premium rates available. So even though dynamically it's pointing to an object which has the premium rate, you can you still cannot actually write a dot uh, dot notation like this. It's a very important point to uh, remember. And the follow up question will be: But what if I really really want to really get access to the premium rates on the objects that's actually pointed to by S? In that case, you will need a cast, which will, which will be the next topic uh, for the lecture. All right. Okay, so that's about um, the uh, principle about static type versus dynamic type. It's really important for you to make sure you understand it. I think especially the concluding example over here, when I say S dot premium rates, whether or not you will compile does not depend on the, uh, the dynamic type, which is over here. It only depends on the declared static type of S, which is students over here. Okay, all right, let's now go back to the slides. So how can the dynamic type change at a runtime? Uh, there are two ways to do it, and let's see uh, one by one uh, with some example. The first way, you can simply reassign a reference variable to a newly created object using the new keyword in Java. Let's see, uh, some principle over here. The new object class, basically uh, whatever that calls after the new keyword, it must be a descendant class of the reference variable static type. Otherwise, you cannot really fulfill the uh, expectation that's imposed by the static type of the reference variable. That's the uh, intuition. Let's see some example over here. Okay, right away. Now we actually got two lines over here. Both of them are actually valid. Okay, let's see this. And let's now follow the principle that we just said about visualization. So for this part over here, we are declaring Jim to be of static type students. So you can see this is the student static type for Jim. Once declared, it's never changed never ever changed so let me just uh, make a note over here this will be the static type of 
gym. Okay, and then uh, let's now see how we can visualize this. So what I would do is I'm going to say gym is a, a reference variable, and then it's going to store the address of some objects over here. I'm going to visualize that, but let me just first of all to note that since uh, it's declared to be students, so we can say students over here just to remind us. If the context is so clear, we don't need to write it. But for now, I think for illustration purpose, we have to. And the students over here, let me just make a note again. It is the static type of Jim. All right, so that means any objects that Jim is pointing to must be able to fulfill the expectation for its static type students, right? As long as the objects over here can fulfill the expectation for students, meaning that the objects must be of type over here, a descendant class of students. In this case, it can either be student itself or resident students or non-resident student, right? I'm just looking ahead about how we're gonna go with the illustration. Let's see the first possible dynamic type. Let's see the first one. You can see here, so we say new resident students. So this is the dynamic type number one, dynamic type. That we uh what that we propose to actually reassign uh gym to. And so this one here will be uh resident students over here. So now would this be valid? The answer is it will be valid because resident students being a descendant of students will be able to fulfill all the expectation for students. Right? It's really important to know that. So this uh resident students class over here can fulfill. expectations of the student class because resident students is a descendants oh let me just write a little bit better is a descendants all right so that's about the uh, first one, okay? And after, since this will be valid, so what's gonna happen is we're going to have one object over here, dynamic type is actually resident students. I'll say RS. So you can think about after executing this line, at the end of that, dynamic type of S will just be resident students. All right, so that's the first line. What about a second line? The second line, we're just reassigning uh, Jim over here to be another new expression. Let me use a different color here. So here you can see it's a new non-resident students over here. And you can see from the hierarchy over here, non-resident students over here, right? Whether or not this will be valid depends on whether or not, non-resident student can fulfill all the expectation for students. In this case, yes, because non-resident student is a descendant class of students, right? Always the descendant class can fulfill all the expectation for its uh, ancestor, but, but not vice versa, okay? Let me write it down over here. So this one here, similar arguments, we can say this can fulfill expectations of students because non-resident students is a descendant of students, which is the static type for Jim. And finally, after this line over here, what's gonna happen after we execute this line? At the runtime, rather than pointing to this uh, object over here of dynamic type resident students, Jim is now going to point to another object over here Whose, uh, whose type is non-resident students. So that means after this line over here, dynamic type of S will become non-resident students. And I want you to recall what we said in the intuition, uh, in, the, in the part for the intuition, intuition for dynamic binding. Given that the dynamic type for S is actually RS, versus dynamic type of S is actually NRS. If you try to invoke the get tuition method, you're actually going to get different result. And that's uh, really what we said before about dynamic binding. But I will get there into some example later, okay? All right, hopefully this makes sense to you.
And let me see if there's anything else I want to say. Okay, I think that's about this example here. Okay. Let's now move on about how the dynamic type can change, right? And notice that when we are either here or when we are here, the static type for Jim always remain the same. Always as is uh, how it was declared in the first place. Dynamic type can really change for as many times as you like. Every time you're trying to reassign the variable to be something else. And we're to only talking about case number one, which is some new expression, just create, uh, creating a new object. So there'll be case number two as well, which we'll see very soon. All right, so let's now move on. And that's the uh, second way. We can reassign a reference variable V to an existing object that is referenced by another variable other, right? So we can simply do V is assigned to other. So now what would be the new dynamic type for V if we try to reassign that? Well, diagrammatically, since we're going to say V is now going to point to wherever other is pointing to, so that means the dynamic type for V is going to become just the same as that uh, as the dynamic type for other because they, got, they are going to become alias, right? So that would be the substitution principle. In order for this to be valid, and this does correspond to the safe case for the uh, substitution rule, we want to make sure other, the static type for other should be a descendant class of the static type for V. We want to make sure the static type for other can fulfill all the expectation that's imposed upon the static type for V, right? Uh, the same as before. It's always about fulfilling the expectation if you really want to do some as or a variable assignment to change the dynamic type. Okay. Okay, let's now take a look at one example over here. Okay, let's see this. Uh, actually, you know what? Before that, I think there was one example I was still want to go through. I forgot. Okay, can we just re uh, roll back to the case number one and we'll go to the case number two example uh, right after that? Let's take a look at this one here. We still have some dynamic type that we want to assign to Jeremy, right? This will be the uh, proposed dynamic type. We want to do this. Proposed dynamic type that we attempt to assign. And then you can see this one in the context is actually student over here. And then what about uh, the left hand side? So here for resident students over here, so you can see Jeremy over here is declared to be resident students. So that means the static type for Jeremy is resident students. Whether or not this assignment will be valid depends on the following. Whether or not this is uh, valid depends on can students the proposed dynamic type fulfill the expectations of Jeremy's static type. In this case, we know that it's resident students. Well, can it? Can students fulfill the expectation of resident students? The answer is not, because students is actually not. Student is not a res uh, is sorry. Student is not a descendant class of resident students. So that's why you cannot. Okay, let's now write it down. So the answer is no. Because students is not a descendant of resident students. Okay, so that's uh, simply not possible. And if you really want to say hypothetically, we can also prove by contradiction, like what I did in the polymorphism, uh, intuitive polymorphism example. Let me just uh, mention that uh, uh, verbally quickly. Let's say hypothetically, let's say this would be okay. In that case, Jeremy would be pointing to some new, uh, some student objects. What would be part of its Jeremy's uh, expectation for resident students? It would be premium rates. And now, will the premium rate be supported by the student objects? Absolutely not, because student objects always only contain the attributes that's declared over here, which does not include premium rates. So that's actually not possible, right? Let me just write down a little bit, uh, some hints for you if you want to prove by contradiction. Contradiction. 
Okay, so we can say if valid e students objects does not support. Okay, one example would be, let's say premium rates that would be expected upon the static type. Premium rates expected on students, right? It's very important also for you to actually know about this proof by contradiction technique over here, okay? So that's why it should not be valid. Okay, let me just uh, do separate that a little bit. Otherwise, you might just be, okay, over here, right? So if valid, the premium rates cannot be supported by the dynamic type students. In that case, it will lead to a crash. So that means the original assumption that it was valid should be false. So the opposite should be true, meaning that it should be invalid. All right, so we are following the same reasoning pattern that we did for the intuition for polymorphism. If you got any doubts, you can refer to that part, earlier part for the uh, module. All right, so that's about the uh, second example I would like to go over for case number one. And before we go back to case number two about reassigning the reference variables to another one to change its dynamic type, let me just assign two exercises for you. Okay, over here. All right, so over here, so I got two exercises, okay? Uh, using a smartphone example, okay? I'll give you a little bit of visual hints about how you can judge. We still have, let's say, will, will these two lines be valid versus will this line, will these two lines be valid, right? So that's the uh, two exercises for you, okay? But I would suggest, you uh, since I give you the diagram for the inheritance hierarchy over here, you can, the easiest way to judge is really by highlighting the uh, static type and dynamic types. So you can see Android over here is the static type for my phone. Android is here. And now the first uh, dynamic type will be Huawei P, uh, Huawei P50 Pro, which is over here. Can this dynamic type fulfill the expectation of Android? That's how you decide, right? I'll leave the answer to you. And also the second one, here we got uh, my phone is reassigned to Galaxy S21. So Galaxy S21 over here, right? Remember the static type uh, of Android does not uh, change ever. So now can Galaxy S21 fulfill the expectation of Android, right? So now the answer should be obvious to you. So that should really determine whether these two lines are valid or not. I'll leave that as an exercise for you. All right, exercise number two over here. Similar, we still got two lines for you to decide. Let's say my phone, uh, the static type was declared to be iOS, which is here. And then what we're doing is, let's say for the first dynamic type, let's say Huawei P50 Pro. Huawei P50 Pro. And now we want to ask whether or not Huawei P50 Pro, the proposed dynamic type, can fulfill iOS, which is the declared static type. And it will be able to fulfill if Huawei uh, P50 Pro is a descendant class of iOS. And what's, uh, what's iOS descendant classes? Does, uh, do they include Huawei P50 Pro? That's, the, uh, that's how you answer the question. All right, finally, what about Galaxy S21, which is over here? Similar idea. Whether or not this reassignment should be valid depends on whether or not Galaxy S21, the proposed dynamic type, can, uh, can fulfill the expectation of my phone's static type, which never changes. It's always iOS over here. Can this fulfill this? And this can only fulfill this if this was a descendant class of iOS. But is it? That's, the, that's, that's why you should answer, right? I hope the uh, answer for the two exercises are quite obvious to you. If you got any doubts, you should reach out to me. All right? So that's about the two exercises.